There's a new handheld coming called the Playdate. Ouya is dead. Can you believe it? Mario Kart Mobile looking iffy. And uh, Game Freak is up to some shady stuff, IMO. Out of nowhere. Just out of nowhere. I haven't, I never heard of this. Maybe like Shane, they've been talking about this forever. Are you serious? Grow up. No, I, I, I didn't know anything about this. I literally just saw this today for the first time ever. But there's a new handheld that's coming to the market called Playdate. Just Playdate. It's by Panic Inc. Which is like Panic Button? The people that do the great port, Switch ports? No! Panic Inc. They're responsible for Firewatch. I don't know what that is. I'm sure you do. Uh, an Untitled Goose Game, which I do know what that is. It's just a, it's a meme game. It's a, the whole thing is a fucking meme. And the thing about this handheld, it looks pretty meme-y. It looks pretty much like a Game Boy, but it has a crank on the side that you just, you literally crank it like that, but it can be, it can be full. We'll get to that in a second. It's got a fucking crank on it, though. That's what you need to know. It's a 2.7 inch screen, 400 by 240, black and white. The screen is black and white. I don't know if they thought color, that's a little too fancy. The, the model I saw was all yellow. It looked pretty cool actually, but I'm like a black and white screen. Okay, wow. Look like a classic Game Boy, A, B, a and B buttons, a D-pad, and, and then a fucking crank on the side. Um, but it's coming with 12 new games. 2020 release date is what we're looking at here. So next year, not even, not even too far off really. Uh, and they're, they're, the 12 games they're working on are from a bunch of different creators, actually. Uh, Katamari Damashi creator, apparently, is working on a game uh, for the system. So this seems like right up his alley, because he's real, I mean, I don't know, him, whatever, whatever his fuck his name is, I don't know. Seems right up their alley because uh, it's a wacky little fucking handheld here. It's, it's silly, it's sassy, it's, you know, you just played Katamari Damashi, it's some of the silliest stuff you're ever going to get into, all right? And if you haven't played it, you should, because it's a fun time, and like I said, it's... It's wacky. You're going to go, what? what's going on? This is actually a video game that was produced? Haha, <laughs> wow. Um, but like I said, the crank on the side can be tucked away in case you uh, you don't want to use it. Some games don't use it. Some games do use it. Some games it's mandatory, apparently. But some games just said, you know what? We don't need the crank. Thank you, Playdate, but the crank, we, we don't need it. Just put it away. It can be tucked away into the console. Uh, the console itself is going to be $150. At launch, games are included in that price, 12 games. I'm assuming that it's gonna be like a download thing because they said there's gonna be new games coming weekly for the thing. So, you know, I don't know if that's one game a week or games a weekly, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, that's a lot of work for them to be doing, I guess, for this random handheld that they don't know if it's gonna succeed or not. I feel like it's not. It's really, really gimmicky, super out there, super weird. I'm not interested in it. You could sign up for a list to be ready to pre-order or something like that. Oh, it's not that big of a deal, all right? <laughs> Take it easy, Playdate. No one wants you that much, I'm sure. Maybe they do, but I don't know. To me, it just looked like some weird little gimmick. Maybe hipsters will like it, I, I don't know, all right? And maybe you're like, Shane, you're a hipster. No, I'm not, all right? Take that back. Um, yeah, games are included. I'm sure there's gonna be a subscription fee after the initial 12 games, though, because they're gonna be giving out games for free for years, right? If this thing does well, they're not gonna just be like, well, games for free forever. Uh, $150, that's a steep, steep price though. You can go get, um, on eBay, you can get a refurbished 3DS, new 3DS XL, 120 bucks for Nintendo. Look, it's pretty much brand new. You can get a refurbished 2DS XL, new 2DS XL, the, uh, the clamshell one, the nice one. You can get that for hundred bucks refurbished from Nintendo. It's pretty much brand new. Uh, I saw Spawnway break one down and he was like, this thing's fucking brand new. So there you go, hundred bucks, or you can pay 150 bucks for your play date. Even on top of that, you can get a new 2DS XL. I think they're like 150 bucks new at the store, right? So uh, same price as this. I don't know, that's a terrible price. If this thing was like 80 bucks, maybe I'd give it a, a, a mess around with it or something. Probably still not, but 150 bucks, hell no! Play date, but hey, check it out. It's silly, it's sassy, it's weird. Black and white. If we got the creator of Katamari Dimashi working on something, that might be interesting. Apparently a lot of these games are gonna be exclusive to the play date. So uh, if you do want to play them, you're going to have to pony up that dough, buddy. Uh, maybe they'll give us some other colors too besides yellow. Uh, that's yet to be seen though. I, I would imagine they would, right? And it's like a fun little wacky thing. So I'm sure they will. Again, regardless, I'm not interested. Are you? Maybe you are. Maybe you're like, Shane, that looks incredible. That's going to revolutionize gaming. The crank is where it's at.
And uh, in some other wacky device news, the Ouya is dead. It dies next month. Uh, Razor said, nope, we've, we're done losing money on this thing. You think we want to just keep just losing money on this? No one wants the Ouya. No one wanted the Ouya. Originally, way back many, many, many years ago, people were like, damn, the Ouya is going to be sick. I remember hearing about it, and I was like, damn, that sounds kind of cool, right? I could get into that. I'm, I'm getting there with the Ouya. And then uh, it came out, but then it came out and then everybody was like, oh, it's, it's kind of just like, bull it's just like, oh, wow, we get a bunch of bullshit on here. Nothing real. We don't get anything real on the Ouya. Great. And then we got all these other, in it was supposed to be like an indie, <laughs> an indie console thing for like indie devs to shine. But then like all these indie, indie devs started blowing up on like 3DS and, and Xbox and all, all these other things. And it was kind of like, yeah, um, fuck the Ouya, right? Because we don't, no one, buy, no one, no, no one wants it. So uh, who gives a shit that the Ouya is dead, right? I mean, like, the, the, no one cares. All right, uh, thank God. I can't believe Razor's been, been uh, pushing it this long. I thought it was already dead. Honestly, I really did. When I heard this, I was like, wait, what? What do you mean the Ouya's dead next month? I thought it was, they, they make those still? It's a miracle. Somehow it survived this long. I don't, survived, I don't know. Uh, they're putting it out of its misery, that's for damn sure. Because uh, like I said, I don't know anybody in the, I've never met anyone that was like the Ouya's, who has a Ouya. So, <laughs> RIP, I guess. The beta for Mario Kart Mobile is out, and uh, I'm hearing a lot of spicy stuff. I'm not in the beta. I didn't. Even, I didn't even try to get access to the beta. I don't give a shit about cell phone games. God damn it! The fucking air. Un momento, por favor. I, I don't. I don't give a shit about about mobile games. Like I really don't care. It, it, when Mario Kart Mobile comes out, Mario Kart Tour. Sorry. Uh, when that comes out, I will download it and I'll fuck around with it, but I probably probably will play it a handful of times and be done with it. I have my Switch with me when I'm on the go, traveling and stuff. If I'm ever out and about, I don't I don't ever have enough free time to play a mobile game. So I don't really care. Uh, but a lot of people are upset about the beta. Apparently it's uh, locked to portrait mode. Apparently you can't play it in landscape, which portrait mode is vertical for... If you didn't know the terminology, it's vertical. It's when you're playing, you're, you gotta play on your phone like this, when you play with one finger, instead of turning it sideways and like feeling more natural like a controller. So it's locked into that, which is kind of weird. You want, you need to get some peripheral view of like people coming up on you and like, you know, corners and stuff like that. But hey, Nintendo said, you know what? Fuck it, they don't need that. Not for the mobile game, no sir. Um, the, la the races are two laps uh, instead of the traditional three. Uh, thumb control, like I said, you, you uh, from what I saw, you just use one thumb and you literally just move the character like this and acceleration is done all on its own. Everything is like done on its own apparently. And you're just doing this and you tap for the, uh, for the items, which it looks all right. It looks all right. I mean like what, I don't know how intricate you want the controls to be on a mobile game. <laughs> ah, oh God. But it looks like it works. It looks like that works. It looks like, okay, I get it. That's great. All right. Um, but, the, but where we get into the real trouble here, what people are really upset about is the uh, the microtransactions in the game. Uh, everything is unlockable. It comes with a lot. There's like a lot of characters, a lot of vehicles, a lot of everything. But you gotta unlock everything by playing the game and you get random unlocks of like, it's literally just, you could get like a shitty character, or a shitty cart or a shitty whatever, or you can get like a really super ultra rare. You know how games do that. Or like even Pokemon cards or whatever. You're like, oh, I got the ultra secret rare. Wow. It's like one of those where you, it looks like you're going to have to put a lot of uh, either time or more than likely most people money into this to get a good character. And apparently the characters uh, and the stats and all that stuff are dependent on like how rare it is. You get a super rare, you have like a really awesome character and you can just outpace everybody else apparently from what i hear like i said i haven't played this i'm not gonna play the beta i might play it when it actually comes out but i got no interest in this right now i'm just telling you what people are pissed about but uh, that does sound pretty shitty if you you got to get the ultra rare to have any type of chance against other people with ultra rare stuff that's super incentivizing people to throw money at this thing right especially kids kids got you know mario kart on mobile that's going to be a huge hit for uh for children for everybody right i feel like this game is going to do amazing for Nintendo, because it's li it literally looks like Mario Kart on a cell phone. Like, I, it's not that dumbed down, uh, as far as I've seen. Some people are saying it's pretty dumbed down, but from what I've seen, looks pretty on point. But uh, that is shitty. That's the unlockables need to be purely cosmetic. Nintendo, have we not gotten to the point in gaming where we realize like play to win is shitty and we don't do that anymore? Like Nintendo, you sh above anybody else, you should know better than this, right? Like, 
Mario Realm was like, oh, you pay for the game, you own the game. Why can't Mario Kart Tour be like that? Oh, you pay for the game, you own the game. Make us pay like 15 bucks for it or something, whatever. And then we own it. And then we can unlock everything within the game. And don't have to put money into it, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But we get into another microtransaction that is uh, really it's terrible. Apparently, you're, you can't race all day, all right? You know how other mobile games do, like Candy Crush and whatever. You got to take breaks and it's like... You could pay to keep playing, or you could take a break for like an hour, or whatever the fuck they do in mobile games. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, apparently in Mario Kart Tour, your character gets tired of racing after just a couple races, maybe a few races, I'm not sure. I don't really remember that specifically, but they do get tired very quickly, uh, and you gotta let them rest to, to keep playing, or you can throw some money at that bad boy and get them out there racing. I don't know what you do. I don't know what they're, if you put money in the game, it just shows them like snort coke, or drink a Red Bull, or I don't know what they do, but they're like, Luigi's ready to go, all right? You gave us a dollar, he is ready to rip, all right? It's like a behind the scenes type of thing. I don't know what, I don't know what's going on there, all right? Uh, I mean, sure, you, uh, sure, real life racers get tired, but NASCAR, they go for hours, right? They go for hours and hours, they shit themselves, and they piss themselves in NASCAR. And you tell me, Luigi can't go 10 laps without taking a break? Jesus Christ, grow up. But really, that is shitty. All these microtransactions revolving around Mario Kart Tour, uh, they are pretty shitty. They are pretty, really classically scummy mobile game uh, microtransactions. What I thought Nintendo was was not was not trying to do. I thought they were like, you know, we don't want to nickel and dime. But I've heard a lot of things about how they're like, you know, we don't want to do that because we want to treat our consumers right. Blah 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 blah, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But Mario Kart Mobile, they're like, we are gonna make so much fucking money watch this shit so for this one they threw the ethics out the window they said you know what fuck it we're we're cashing in on mario kart uh because it's fucking mario kart right i mean they can do it they're gonna do it it's gonna happen they're gonna make tons of money all we can do is complain and that will do probably nothing right unless everyone complains and everyone's like fuck you nintendo make it right then maybe they will hey we'll see this is just the beta Maybe if they get enough negative feedback, they will change it. Who knows? But uh, regardless, whatever happens, they're going to make a lot of money here. I saw this today, and I also watched uh, Switch Force talk about it, because I, 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 was, I was really intrigued by this. Because I'm pretty excited for the new Pokemon game, Sword and Shield, coming to Switch. And I know it's not as exciting as it could be. The graphics are lazily done, blah, blah, blah. The whole, we, you know, we've been over the dis disappointing sides. I'm still excited. It's a new Pokemon game, God damn it. Uh, looks like it's more of a classical style than Sun and Moon. Sun and Moon, I wasn't really feeling that much. But this looks like it's more traditional in, in my, in my, this is what I want, all right? My, my brain's like, all right, I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, damn, I'm gonna be sitting here killing it on my Switch, playing this. That's gonna be sick. It's gonna, it's gonna be my first real Pokemon adventure on a Switch. Pokemon Let's Go, I barely played it all because it's so easy and just so hand-holding and I hate that you can't battle wild Pokemon. It's just, it, they took all, they took, they just stripped it down to the bare ass minimum basics and I don't like that. So I'm excited to check out the new Pokemon game a lot. But when I saw this, I was like, oh, pump the brakes, Game Freak. What's going on here? Apparently, uh, Game Freak is prioritizing all other projects aside from Pokemon. Uh, this guy named Masayuki Onoi, who is a programmer and director for the Pokemon games, said that uh, they have two teams. They have two teams at Game Freak, Team 1 and Team 2. And all right, already out the gate, it's a bad look. Team 1 is everything besides Pokemon. Team 2 is just Pokemon. So it's like, why is Team 2 Pokemon? Game Freak, do you understand where you got probably 95% of your money, if not, if not more, honestly? It's from Pokemon, you jackass. They're, they're Team 1. But anyways. Uh, team 1 is called Gear Project, and uh, Team 2 is just Pokemon. Uh, but they said that they're prioritizing, he said, that the Game Freak is prioritizing Gear Project. And uh, they're always trying to create something, this is a quote from him right here. They're always trying to create something that is equally exciting or more exciting than Pokemon. They're like, we gotta get away from this. We gotta get away from Pokemon. We are trapped in a fucking rut with Pokemon. Everyone just says, oh, Game Freak, Pokemon. They don't know us for anything else. I don't. I know they've made other games, but I couldn't name one, all right? You tell me Game Freak, boom, Pokemon, right? I just remember the fucking Game Boy logo, Game Freak, like, 
and then the fucking Gengar pops up, Nidorino. That's what I remember. I remember Game Freak, all right, for Pokemon. You're Pokemon, you're gonna be Pokemon forever. You think you're gonna make some more, something more exciting than Pokemon? Eh, wrong! Sorry, Game Freak, you are absolutely wrong 100% on that one. Keep trying, but it ain't happening, bubba. Uh, but Gear Project is for original pitches within the company. They want employees to come to them and go, hey, I got this sick new game that I think is gonna be big, bigger than Pokemon. They go, we got one, Tony, come here. Let's get on this. So they go check it out, and uh, obviously it just disappears in the, into the, it disappears out of the minds of every gamer that's ever seen it. They go, oh yeah, Game Freak only makes Pokemon. Remember when they, they made that game just last week? Guess what? It disappeared because no one cares. Um, but he did say that they like that they're focusing on other uh, games right now uh, with Gear Project to keep uh, ideas fresh with Pokemon. They want they say they he said that working on other games helps them bring new ideas to Pokemon and keep it fresh, etc., etc., etc. And I'm like, pretty much every Pokemon game for the longest time has been the exact same thing, except for when you do your little spin-offs, you do Pokemon Snap, which why can't you just give us a Pokemon Snap 2? Are you kidding me? Um, and then you got your, you know, Mystery Dungeon, whatever, blah, blah, Pokemon Stadium, Pokemon Coliseum, all those other weird di different little shows. They're all still in like a very similar same vein to Pokemon. Like it's not that creative. Pokemon Snap was pretty creative. Um, it was like, oh look, we can take pictures of Pokemon. I don't know why you thought of that, but that was great. We all loved it. We want Pokemon Snap too, and you're not giving it to us. But uh, uh, Switch Force was like, I think this is a good thing. You know, I, I I don't think it means that they're like really not prioritizing it. I, I mean, because like Pokemon's probably already almost done. Which I mean, yeah, it probably is, right? It comes out in fall. They've had been working on it for a long time. It falls coming up in just a few months, so it does have to be pretty much done, but there's other Pokemon games. We need, we, we need working on Pokemon at all times, right? Am I wrong or what? And also, you better get that thing polished up and pretty as, as can be with all the criticism you got. So you, better, you need to be putting a lot of effort into Pokemon Sword and Shield. That's a huge deal for you. You're gonna, if it's amazing, you're gonna sell far more copies but regardless you're gonna sell mil millions and millions and millions but if it's like incredibly outstanding then you're gonna pull people back in to the franchise because i was damn near out with sun and moon i was like you know what jesus christ but hey i'm excited for this um but yeah it was just kind of weird to see this i was like what do you mean you're prioritizing something over pokemon like it's like you are pokemon right and town looks cool and everything and like it's a new little original thing. I'm excited for it. When I saw it at E3, I was like, damn, Game Freak's making a sick looking RPG. All right, this is gonna be great. Um, but I'm not as excited for Pokemon, all right? I'm just not, that's just the truth. Um, I am excited for it though. I do want to check it out. But Game Freak, you're not gonna get away from Pokemon. You need to put more effort into Pokemon. You need to prioritize Pokemon because look at all the criticism you got for Sword and Shield so far. Maybe it's because you're not prioritizing Pokemon. Maybe you need to be like, we need to make this the absolute best it can be. Get all our best and brightest minds on the case. Everybody jump in. Let's get this thing going. Because that does not look like what you did with Sword and Shield, honestly. It looks it looks pretty half-assed for what it could be on the Switch. Like, look what, look what Zelda became on the Switch with Breath of the Wild. Look what Mario became on the Switch with Mario Odyssey, etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. You know, th these games got bigger, more expansive, more, more just great across the board. Breath of the Wild is like... Went, Zelda went way out of its comfort zone on that one. You're like, Shane, it's like a it's like a remake of the first one. Don't give me that cute shit, all right? Don't do it. It went way out of its comfort zone. Stop it. Uh, so do that with Pokemon, right? That prioritize Pokemon gave us this fucking huge, wild, open world Pokemon game that is just out there, looks beautiful, plays great, etc., etc. Got all the classic battling mechanics that we like, obviously for online, all that stuff. Give us something like that. Prioritize Pokemon and make way more money like you would. If you made us a Pokemon game and that was as revolutionary as Breath of the Wild, you would pull so many new people in and so many people that were over Pokemon back in because that would be incredible. Get your head in the fucking game, Game Freak, is what I'm trying to say here. Get your head in the game and realize that Pokemon is all you're ever gonna be. Sorry! But if you wanna be like this badass motherfucker on the screen right here, hit up a merch store, fugamecrew.bigcartel.com. We got shirts, we got mugs, we got all that fun stuff. Uh, but if you wanna support the channel and you don't wanna buy merch, we got a Patreon or a direct PayPal link in the description below, patreon.com slash FU Game Crew for as well as a dollar a month. You can help us out a lot. We got a $25 tier where we send a box of memes, couple spots open on that. 
uh, to send out some fun and wacky random stuff to you guys. $10 tier with a letter and a Polaroid, etc., etc. You know, just go check out the links, all right? My channel's down there too, our skateboarding channel, everything else. Go check it out. I'd love you for it. And I'll see you later. So I want to say thank you to your loyalty. Thank you for your support. My foot hurts!